This evening, we will hear from the medical professionals, survivors, and program graduates. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Father Dean Heliologos for his, this evening's invocation. If you would please stand for the prayer and invocation. <clears throat> First, before I begin with this brief prayer, I wanted to thank Bishop Robert J. McManus and Senior Peter, who has the chaplaincy program here at St. Vincent's, and each and every one of you for being true caretakers and caregivers to those who have fought the good fight in being the survivors of cancer. We ask you to please bow your heads as I reflect for a few moments on them being true heroes and heroines. <clears throat> Sorrow looks back, worry looks around, faith looks up. This is a beautiful saying from Emerson. In honor of your name, O oh God, we do more than seek your divine intervention. In expressing the universal desire to live well, fear is tamed and the clouds which illness often brings in its wake are parted. While not yet everything is faced can be changed, Nothing can be changed until it is faced. Confronting life's valleys requires courage, and with your divine help, courage becomes hope. Hope is the oxygen of our souls and strength for living. Strength, courage, and confidence are gained by every experience in which people stop and look fear in the face. O oh Lord, in your hands are the issues that bring more life and help us endure sickness. Bless those who have survived, because having done so, those who are alive and strong see the world much differently from the perspective of eternity. O oh God, most high over all of the earth, let this day and this evening embrace the past with remembrance and the future with longing. Help us to be a protector for those without protection, a leader for those who are lost, and a bridge for those desiring the further shore. Relieve the pain of every living creature and hear our prayers for the doctors and their medicines, for the nurses who embody your healing touch, for the caretakers and caregivers. May no one who has known the threat of illness ever die an unlived life, nor allow the fear of the known or unknown future to exhaust the hope we have in you. Please God, join us now as we pray for the blessing upon the food, and also the life that we share. Help us to remember the times we felt alone, and by your grace, may we never forget how much you love an invitation into our hearts and souls. Amen. Thank you, Father. And I want to thank St. Vincent's Hospital once again for hosting this important event. And now, please welcome Jeffrey Welch, CEO of the Tenant Massachusetts Market, to the stage. Thank you, Russ. Good evening. 
I'm proud to be the CEO of this great team here at St. Vincent. I'm also very honored to host this important event to celebrate life and raise money for Live Strong at the YMCA. I want to start off by recognizing Kathy Hunter, YMCA CEO and president, and also the governing board chair of St. Vincent Hospital. She does a great job for the YMCA, and we're all very proud to have her as part of our team. Kathy, thank you for getting us involved in this important program and for your dedication to improving the health and well-being of our community. I also want to thank Garden Fresh, Dean and Todd, for being here tonight. They were always a great partner. Our AV supplier, Revelations, the YMCA staff who have done such a great job setting things up and the flowers, and also St. V's staff um, for all their help. As you know, the goal of Live, Live Strong YMCA program partnership is to promote the importance of physical activity after cancer diagnosis. This program has helped more than 50,000 people in over 600 communities and trained close to 4,000 YMCA staffers. I would like to take a moment to honor and commend and thank each and every one of them. When someone gets cancer diagnosis, they assemble their treatment and support teams and then they begin the fight of their lives. Our community should know that people don't need to travel far to, high, to find high quality cancer care. There's a national independent healthcare ratings organization called the Lee Pro Group. This organization recognizes hospitals for excellence in quality and patient safety. I'm pleased to announce to you that last week, St. Vincent Hospital once again received a grade A, noting that we are one of the safest and highest quality hospitals in the country. We are also the only Worcester hospital to achieve this quality accolade. As we look at cancer treatment specifically, the St. Vincent Center and Wellness Center, Cancer and Wellness Center, provides world-class cancer treatments and services in an environment that promotes healing and wellness. We have a comprehensive cancer center that offers chemotherapy, imaging, radiology therapy, rehabilitation, and physician consults, all under one roof. Our program is accredited by the Commission on Cancer, meaning the care is based on the highest standards. We offer a full spectrum of cancer treatment options and advanced medical technology found at any world-class cancer care program. We also have a dedicated women's wellness center providing not only routine care, but also diagnostic testing and cancer treatment. Once treatment is complete, however, cancer survivors still have many needs, including difficulty returning to physical activity. That's where Live Strong and YMCA come into play with this important 12-week activity program to get them back on their feet. The team at St. Vincent Hospital recognizes the wonderful benefits of participating in programs such as ours and for our patients. It fills a need that goes beyond the hospital's role, but very much aligns with our mission. On behalf of everyone at St. Vincent Hospital, we are so proud to support this program, and we have seen firsthand how it has helped hundreds of cancer survivors rebuild emotional and physical strength. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, St. Vincent's Hospital's partnership with the YMCA makes a huge difference in the lives of cancer survivors. 
So our MC this evening is Dr. Dilip Jain. Dilip is a primary care physician, has been on St. Vincent's medical staff for over 25 years. He is also a cancer survivor, and he has been involved with the Livestrong at the Y initiative as a participant. He recently graduated from the program at the Burroughs Family Branch in September. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. Dilip Jane. Thank you, Ross. I am so excited to be here. It's an honor to be able to represent the Livestrong at the Y program. And I know from personal experience that once medical treatment is over and has ended, survivors need new encouragement apart from their oncologist and their treating team. We must remember that cancer does not discriminate with regards to age, gender, race, or ethnicity. To meet this unmet need, in the community, the YMCA of Central Massachusetts partnered with Livestrong and started this initiative six years ago. To date, this life-changing initiative has reached over 775 survivors and even more caregivers. I'm so, so happy that I can be one of those survivors. In order to keep it free for all the survivors in need, the Y must raise charitable dollars. 100% of the funds raised tonight will go directly towards the real costs associated with the operating the Livestrong program. Although the program is offered at no cost to the participants and their dependent family members, it is not free for the Y to deliver. I was diagnosed with bladder cancer five years ago, today, and fortunately it was detected early enough. I've had two surgeries, followed by 12 rounds of chemotherapy sessions, and I'm lucky to say I am in remission. As a primary care doctor, I share my story with my patients to encourage them to remain optimistic and always stay positive. Without the support of my family, especially my wife, this journey could not have been so pleasant. My wife found out about the Livestrong program at the, at the Y from a patient of hers and encouraged me to join. Each group consists of five to six survivors, along with the guidance of a personal trainer, and classes are held twice a week for 12 weeks. My time with Livestrong was a fantastic experience for both not only my physical, but also my emotional and mental, mental well-being as we provided support to each other. And I'm very happy to say three of my batchmates are here today. Truly, my success was a wonderful blend of cutting edge treatment support from family, and participating at the Livestrong program. We know more than ever about the benefits of a healthy lifestyle for cancer patients and its potential impact on recurrence with specific types of cancer. Here to share some encouraging new information is my colleague, Dr. Siddiqui. He serves on the staff of St. Vincent's Hospital and treats individuals with a variety of types of cancer. He's well known for the time to taking the time to explain the types of cancer and treatment progress so his patients understand their disease and what to expect. Additionally, he was also made Chief of Hematology and Oncology at St. Vincent's Hospital. And please welcome Dr. Siddiqui. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Dilip, and everyone, all the organizers. So I'm going to be talking about the relationship between physical activity or exercise and cancer. And I've been given a very difficult task. Expectation is that by the time I'm done with my talk and we're done with our program, all of us will leave our cars here and we'll walk to homes. <laughs> so I don't think we're asking too much here. Now, I'm going to start with a question and uh, please uh, respond by a show of hands. So the question is that how many of us did do some sort of exercise today? And before you raise your hands, let me define exercise. Now, by exercise I mean 20 to 30 minutes of 
moderate intensity aerobic physical activity. This does not count walking in the home, going to the restroom, or walking at work, going to the cafeteria to grab a burger or a diet soda. So, the real, uh, because by definition, that's also exercise. Physical activities, whenever we are moving, we are doing some physical activity, but that does not merit exercise. So, since now we know the definition of exercise, so how many of us did do some sort of exercise today? I don't, I don't see your hand up. That's fine. <laughs> Very good. So, the next question is, how many of us who did not do exercise today are feeling guilty about that? Yes, good, good, good. So, according to the current physical activity guidelines by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Resources, for substantial health benefits, adults should engage in at least two hours and 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity, or one hour and 15 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity, or an equivalent combination of both vigorous and uh, moderate intensity activity per week. So I'm going to talk about different stages of cancer management and then the benefit from exercise in all those stages. Cancer treatment or cancer management has four stages or phases and we'll talk about that one by one. So the first stage in cancer management is cancer prevention which is the prevention of development of cancer in the first place. Second stage is cancer screening, which helps in the detection of cancer at a very early and more curable stage. Third stage is the cancer treatment stage, in which patients who are diagnosed with cancer are undergoing therapy. And the fourth stage is the post-treatment or survivor safe stage. So the first stage is cancer prevention stage. And please remember this, this is very, very important. Cancer management starts with cancer prevention. Prevention is better than cure. I don't know how many times we have been saying this and we have been hearing this, but this is the key. This is the essence for not just for cancer, but every disease. Prevention is better than cure. So does anyone know who said this the first time? I tried to look it up and According to, to uh, one source, it was a Dutch philosopher Erasmus who said it in 1500s. According to another source, it has been traced back to someone in 1200s. And yet another source, it was a Roman poet Perseus. So in other words, people have been talking about this, have been saying this for thousands of years. But do we truly understand this, that prevention is better than cure? Now I hope that most of us know that cancer, unfortunately, is a very common problem. It is the second leading cause of death in this country, second only to heart diseases. According to 2014 data, uh, heart diseases were responsible for approximately 600,000 deaths, and cancer was responsible for approximately 590,000 deaths. And these two combined were responsible for 50% deaths in this country. Just to understand how common cancer is, I'm going to give you one more statistics. The lifetime probability of developing cancer in a man is one into two. In a woman is one into three. In other words, a family of four, two of them will develop cancer at some point in time in their life. Family of six, three of them will develop a cancer at some point in time in their life. So it's a very common and serious health issue. So what can be done to prevent cancer? And this brings up another question. Again, by raise of hands. How many of us believe that cancer is a preventable disease? See, not too many hands out there. So there is a common misconception that cancer is a genetic disease. And we cannot do anything about this other than blaming our parents. But this statement is half correct and half incorrect. Cancer is a genetic disease, meaning that it is second due to some changes or mutations in the genes, genes which control our cell functions, but only 5 to 10 percent of the time these mutations are familial or inherited. 9 to 95 percent of the time 
these mutations or changes in the genes are not inherited. They are secondary to some sort of environmental factor or lifestyle factors, such as physical inactivity, such as obesity, smoking is a big one there, unhealthy diet, excessive sun exposure, use of tanning bears, etc., etc., etc. And all these factors are modifiable. Multiple studies have shown convincing link between physical inactivity, obesity, to the development of at least 13 different cancers. There is also substantial evidence that higher level of physical activity is linked to lower risk of several cancers, notably colon, breast, and uterine cancer. And colon and breast cancers are the two most common cancers which we have to deal with. So let's talk about some scientific data supporting the benefit of exercise in prevention of cancer development, the first stage we're talking about. So let's take an example of colon cancer. In 2000, uh, 2009 meta-analysis of 52, it's not two, it's 52 epidemiological studies and a pooled analysis of 12 prospective US and European cohort studies which examined the association between physical activity and colon cancer found that most of the, the most physically active individuals had a 24%, 24% lower risk of colon cancer than the ones who are not very physically active. Breast cancer, 2013 meta-analysis of 31 prospective studies, the average breast cancer risk reduction but with physical activity was 12%. Endometrial cancer, 20%. So this is huge benefit in terms of prevention of cancer development. In another study, over 1.4 million individuals, physical activity was associated with reduced risk of multiple, multiple cancers, starting from head and neck, esophageal, stomach, liver, bladder, kidney, blood cancers. So now we know that physical activity and not being obese is associated with approximately 15 25 percent reduction in the risk of developing cancer and by the way it's not just the cancer which exercise prevents there are so many other non-cancer diseases like high blood pressure diabetes hyperlipidemia arthritis osteoporosis dementia which exercise can prevent the question is so how does exercise does it and exercise has many beneficial biological effects on the body and i'm going to mention just few of those Exercise lowers the levels of certain hormones such as insulin and estrogen and certain growth factors which have been associated with development of various cancers. Exercise helps to prevent obesity which we all know that is also associated with development of several cancers, primarily breast cancer. Exercise reduces inflammation. Multiple studies have shown an association between inflammation and development of cancer. Exercise improves immune system function. And that's a very, very important point. Immune system, more and more we are learning about immune system role in preventing cancer as well as in treating cancer. Now we have new immunotherapy drugs which boost one's immune system to fight cancer. And they work much more effectively than the traditional chemotherapy drugs. So in summary, being sedentary is linked to health risks. Sedentary behaviors such as prolonged periods of television watching Sitting and lying down is a risk factor for developing chronic conditions including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and premature death. So we are going to move on to second stage which is screening. And just a few points about screening because screening exercise doesn't really apply here. But screening is very important. Screening saves lives. Mammograms, colonoscopies, pap smears, and more recently uh, low dose lung CT for lung cancer screening in patients or people who smoke. I was able to find some connection between exercise and uh, benefit of exercise in screening, which is exercise motivates us to be more active and more aware of our health. And people who are physically more active are more health aware, more health conscious, are more likely to stay on top of screening. And remember, screening saves lives. Third stage. The third stage is the patient stage in which patients are undergoing active treatment for their cancer. 
So what is the benefit from exercise during this stage? Now, this is the most critical and most important stage in the cancer management. I, I cannot stress enough how important exercise is during this stage. It's very well known and has been clearly documented that more physically fit you are, better you do with your treatments. Patients who are more physically active during their therapy, they are able to tolerate chemotherapy or other treatments better and they also have better outcomes from those treatments. And this is regardless of age. An old but physically fit patient does better than a younger but physically unfit patient. Next is the stage 4, which is the post-treatment or survivorship stage. Is physical activity beneficial for cancer survivors? Yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, the benefit from exercise in this setting is greatly underestimated. Research indicates that physical activity has beneficial effects for several aspects of cancer survivorship, especially quality of life, cancer recurrence and cancer progression, and overall survival. In terms of quality of life, a 2012 meta-analysis of clinical trials of exercise interventions in cancer survivors indicated that physical activity had beneficial effects on overall health-related quality of life and specific quality of life issues such as body image, self-esteem, emotional well-being, sexuality, sleep disturbance, social functioning, anxiety, fatigue, pain and depression. So all these issues which many of survivors face, exercise has very huge beneficial effects on all these issues. In terms of cancer recurrence, and this is very important to understand, in terms of cancer recurrence, cancer progression and survival, being physically active after a cancer diagnosis is linked to better cancer specific outcomes for several cancer types and we'll talk about a few here. Breast cancer, two large cohort studies found that women who exercise moderately, moderate exercise is equivalent to walking from two to five hours per week on an average pace, after a breast cancer diagnosis had approximately 40 to 50%, it's 40 to 50% lower risk of breast cancer recurrence, dying from breast cancer and death from any cause when it compared with more sedentary women. So it's a huge benefit which we sometimes don't understand. It's 40 to 50 percent lower risk. It's really amazing. Just to understand what this means, we as cancer doctors put patients on chemotherapy drugs with a huge list of side effects and toxicities with much smaller benefits. We put patients on chemotherapy drugs which has benefits of 3 percent or 5 percent in terms of decreasing the risk of cancer coming back. So these benefits by just doing exercise really huge. Colorectal cancer, same story there. Studies have shown that there is 31% lower risk of death from the, uh, uh, in patients who are more physically active than those who are not. So in summary, exercise saves lives by preventing cancer and many non-cancer diseases and by doing so it saves the labor of being sick. Exercise has scientifically proven benefit in all stages of cancer treatment. Exercise has scientifically proven benefit in almost every disease and health ailments like diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, arthritis, heart and lung disease and you can name it, every single disease. So please remember exercise is the best medicine. Please make exercise a sustainable and enjoyable part of your life. Now, I'm going to add, end with an advertisement. Nothing is complete without an advertisement, right? So this is an advertisement about exercise. So if you have to imagine something, imagine it's on the TV, a nice, happy, healthy family with a cute little dog running around, doing exercise inside and outside of the house. And ad starts like this. Please do not underestimate the benefit of exercise. With your next doctor visit, please ask your doctor a prescription for a pair of sneakers instead of a pill. Please ask your doctor how a pair of sneakers helps to lower your cholesterol, blood sugar level, high blood pressure, risk of heart and lung disease, risk of cancer development, improving your social 
uh, improving your survival and quality of life if you have been diagnosed with cancer. And last but not least, the overall benefit of exercise on your general physical and mental health. That was the ad. Now the disclaimer, because that's also, I have, you know, we cannot do an ad without a disclaimer. Now in, on the TV, the disclaimer goes really fast. I don't know how to do that, maybe some sort of software. So I have to go slow. So this advertisement is designed to provide helpful information on the subject discussed. Possible side effects and complications from exercise, including, but not limited to, breaking and fracturing bones, muscle trauma, weight loss and loss of calories, exercises like jogging, running and bicycling can increase the risk of accidents and trauma and possible death. If you are hit by a drunk driver or a driver checking his or her emails on the phone, exercise will make you feel better and look better, which may result in unnecessary pleasant mood and happiness which may cause your spouse to be suspicious about you. <laughs> and if you are hiding something, which may cause fight or possible divorce. So please exercise on your own risk. So how many of us are walking home tonight? <laughs> so please exercise regularly, eat healthy, remember to undergo screening for cancer and try to do everything prevent cancer or any other disease. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Siddiqui, for that uh, informative and entertaining talk. That's why I'm not walking home, because I don't want a divorce. <laughs> Next, I'm going to introduce Kathy Hunter, who is the President and CEO of the YMCA of Central Massachusetts. Dr. Jane and uh, Dr. Siddiqui, where are you? I am compelled right now to ask everyone, because we've been sitting for a while, to stand up and stretch. Give your neighbor a hug, shake their hands, do something, because we know that exercise is so important. Don't anybody leave, however. So once you feel like you've moved your body, you can have a seat. Don't you feel better, however? I'm honored to be here tonight in celebration of survivorship and to announce the Robert E. Maynard Jr. Caregiver Award. Year after year, it's humbling to work with so many fat, passionate volunteers, many of you here tonight and staff, who truly make a difference in the lives of those who need us most. Tonight's event is very special for many different reasons and in many different ways. For me, presenting this award is bittersweet as it provides me the opportunity to remember someone that meant the world to me. Bob Maynard. Bob was one of our beloved Y volunteers who built a legacy of promise and commitment about the Y's mission and cause. He served for 10 years, including tenure as the chair of our board of directors. And as many of you know, Bob lost his brave battle with cancer almost eight years ago. During that fight, I learned many, many things from Bob. And at the top of the list, was the importance of a caregiver. We're so pleased to have Bob's wife, Judy, and her family, his family, here with us tonight. Judy was the first recipient of the Robert E. Maynard Caregiver Award. You know I could not do this. It's now my privilege to present this year's Robert E. Maynard Junior Caregiver Award to Olivia Brochu. Olivia is the daughter of Mary Brochu, a graduate of the Livestrong at the YMC program, also at the Burroughs Family Branch. Mary couldn't be more proud of the many qualities that her daughter possesses. In her nomination, she describes Olivia as smart, 
funny, hardworking, and a great friend. They have the kind of relationship that any mom would hope for. As with many mothers, Mary was excited for her daughter to attend Hampshire College in Amherst, Massachusetts. Olivia was ready and able to break away from being a child and eager to, to enter into adulthood. Of course, discovering Mary's cancer for both mother and daughter was devastating. From the early days of diagnosis through surgeries and treatment and recovery, Olivia was a constant source of unwavering love. With tre when treatment began, including six weeks of daily radiation with two rounds of chemotherapy, Olivia was Mary's companion at the hospital. She traveled home from Amherst each Thursday and spent weekends with Mary. A freshman in college, can you imagine, Olivia maintained her full-time studies and was there for her mom with a smile on, a, on her face and a very upbeat, positive attitude. There's no doubt that Olivia is wise beyond her years and knew exactly how to help her mother during such a challenging time always showing her love and care with small gifts of candles and music and, and lotions. She cooked, she shopped, she cleaned, whatever her mother needed. She even joined her at the Y and exercised in one of the programs, uh, participating in the workouts to help her rebuild her strength. Proudly, Olivia was present at her mom's graduation at the Livestrong the Y program. In Mary's words, I conclude, although cancer was a total surprise to me, I am not surprised by watching my daughter grow into the loving, caring adult she now is. By living with her selflessness, her compassion, and her love, she made me a better person, and my cancer experience an easier journey. Olivia, you are the exact kind of caregiver that our Bob with respect and so honor tonight. So it's my pleasure, please join me in asking Olivia to come to the stage to receive this amazing honor. one of our 
of stories is the same, but they all share a common thread of hope, camaraderie, and unending support. We so strongly believe in the program that we wanted to share our stories and the impact this program has had on our lives. You will hear from each of us describing our journeys and the role that Livestrong at the YMCA has played in each of our lives. So I will ask them a few questions. And the first question is just briefly tell us your story. Ed. In December of 2005, I was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia. At that time, I was a very active member of the Greendale Y and was told to stay away from the gym because there weren't enough, wasn't enough room in my capillaries for red blood cells. They were afraid I was going to have a stroke, so I did. Anyway, I was treated with oral chemo up until late 2014 when the oral drugs stopped working and I was given the option to say, well, the only thing you can have done is have a bone marrow transplant. Well, luckily at that same time, my oncologist was conducting a trial that showed great promise in white mice where they coupled the drug that I was on with an over-the-counter asthma medication. Well, it didn't work. So three months later, they started working me up for a bone marrow transplant. Um, everything about me is unique, and my oncologist would say to me, and they had a hard time finding a donor, and I ended up being a mismatch. But in August of 2015, I spent 32 days in semi-isolation in UMass, had a bone marrow transplant, and here I am today. And the next thing you know, I was in the program. So I started the program in January of 2016, and they haven't looked back since. So I am very lucky because I do have a good friend who also happened to be um, a board member for the Y. Um, and when she came to visit me when I was going through uh, my surgery, she did mention the Livestrong program. I have no idea because, you know, I have no idea. Before I heard my diagnosis, I have no idea. I didn't know any information, you know, only the basic, but I have no idea where do you go if you have cancer. So, so she was very uh, nice to me and she told me about the Livestrong program and she encouraged me to get in touch with the person in charge of the Y Central Mass, or Y um, on Worcester Main Street. So I got in touch with that person, that was Brenda Jenkins, uh, by the way, I, I talked to her and she directed me to the right place. She told me, gave me all the information about the program. And I was very excited because um, that was at the point in my life that I needed to be connected with that kind of program. Um, knowing that I needed to pay my strain again, was, like I said, I was not, I was lack of, I went through a lot of lack of motivation. So getting in touch with the Livestrong program and the staff, they uh, welcomed me, they embraced me uh, with what their motivation and the respire um, uh, staff that they have, by the way. Um, and I have been a, a member of the Livestrong program ever since, and that was about a year, a year, almost a year and a half ago. That's right. So for me, uh, I guess it was a friend at the Y. Uh, lifelong member that's been working out at the Y for a long time. Uh, uh, he was sitting around and he could just see that I was kind of depressed. And I, I think the chemo, the chemo had, uh, I lost like 60 pounds. Uh, the chemo was, was terrible. Uh, and the depression was too. And uh, he just kept on, you know, encouraging me to reach out to Anya at the Live Strong program, he was like, you need to get back to working out again and getting in the gym once you reach out to Anya at the Live Strong program. So I did. And I got to say that that's probably one of the best things that I've done. I feel strong again, and, and I'm working the program.
to get moving again. I'm so grateful for the experience and the support and for the people that I continue to meet. So finally, the question is, what impact has Live Strong and the Y had on your journey? Ed? Well, we, it was, it's a community of warriors, Kristen, and survivors. Um, and in and of itself, that's being part of that group, it's a remarkable experience. The support that our trainers give us is absolutely incredible, uh, both physical support and emotional support. Um, my own personal belief is I wouldn't be where I am today without their support, and I will be eternally grateful to them for that support. We also give and get support from the others in our classes, and right now I, I volunteer as well, and we talk about emotional support to others and, and helping them get through what they're going through, because we've all been there. One of the other things I found was that I would go before class, we went to the Wellness Center at Greendale, and I had my yellow Live Strong t-shirt on, and people in the general membership would come up to me and say hello and introduce themselves, ask how I was doing, what kind of cancer I had had, how I was doing, if I needed any help with anything. And that spurred a lot of lasting friendships. I see people there every day. We have some alumni groups that people get together, so it's created a lot of camaraderie through the people for you know a whole community of cancer survivors, which I think is a wonderful thing. Well, being part of the Live Strong program is this is for me. It's like my family, you know, because that's the way that we support you know uh, each other. And and for me to be in a place where um, people know what you are going through, because we were all in the same. Uh, I heard so many things about chemotherapy, radiation, all the side effects, being tired, depressed. So being in a place that people understood, you know, um, how you feel, what you're going through, for me it was very significant to find that kind of support. And then we become a, a family and we do so many activities together. Not only at the wife, but we also, you know, uh, meet outside as well. So having this external family, you know, there for you, knowing what you're going through and, and, and motivating you and, and keeping you going. This has been absolutely a great experience for me and I'm really uh, thankful that the Livestrong program was there for me when I needed the program the most. That's right. And for me, uh, I think it gives me a place to go. Uh, the mental and the physical part of it is great. Uh, I enjoy being with the ladies in my group. They keep me going. Uh, they are my biggest supporters. My wife, Lisa, uh, gives us a place to you know, take some of the stress off. Uh, I mean, she's my caretaker, but she needs a place to go to to you know just take a break from me, taking care of me sometimes. And, uh, and it's, it's a great program, and I want to say thank you, Anya. Thank you. You're a great trainer. I appreciate you know, the whole program all y'all do for me. Uh, thank you so much. Well, I would echo all of these things that, that you've heard, but I will tell you the best thing to come from my Live Strong at the Y experience is being an intake volunteer at Burroughs Y. I am one of two people who assist um, those who are applying for the program with the, their intake process. We help them fill out forms, answer their questions, offer support, take them on a tour, and often share our stories. But the very, very best thing for me is the privilege of hearing their stories as just as established during that interview process. I love that I am able to take my own experience and turn it into a way to reach out and to help others. So I have one more question for you. How has your participation inspired you to help others? And Having gone through the program and just actually fell in love with it and with the people there, once I finished my program, I said, can I volunteer? Because I want to pay, give it, pay, pay, pay back. I mean, I want to pay it forward and help other people. So since I finished my program, um, March of 2016, I am there Wednesdays and Fridays and Tuesday night and Thursday night to help with the groups and volunteer with them. And I just think it's wonderful to share my experiences with them 
support them physically and emotionally. I just think it's a, a fantastic thing. The other thing is when I finished my program, we had our Mission in Motion fundraiser. I was barely able to ride a bike for more than five minutes. It's a cyclothon for those of you who don't know what it is. But this past spring, I was able to put a group together with my family, and I was able to ride for an extended period of time. We were able to raise funds to support the Livestrong program. That's correct. So I think it's an absolutely phenomenal program. I cannot recommend it enough to more people. I talk about it whenever I go to clinic and to my doctors and nurses there. And we should keep it going, and we want you all to give money. So we can keep the program going. <laughs> I do want to uh, do something pay back because I love this program. I'm very passionate with everything, the program, the design of the program, the staff that is so supportive, all the good things that they do that I do. I want to be um, trained as a uh, like Livestrong uh, trainer. So my mission, my goal is to become uh, one of those training as well. Uh, and I do classes already and like I say you know, I'm going maybe um, uh, step by step but I, I know that I will be there because that's what I would love to do because my mission now and my responsibility is to share what I know with others. I also speak on, on Monday on a local radio station and all I talk about is about nutrition and healthy habits just like the doctor said before emphasize and encourage people to please become more uh, physical active. So my job is to spread what I already know, what I have learned to live strong, and also um, encourage all the people to participate in the program and encourage all of you as well to please give support this wonderful program. There is hope, live strong. Well, I think there's nothing like word of mouth. Uh, that's the way I heard of the program. Uh, I get out in my community now and I try to spread the word. Uh, passing out pamphlets at uh, Dana Farber, Burbank, uh, any hospital, any clinic that I have, I'm trying to uh, put the word out that this program, it works. You know, uh, I wouldn't speak on the program if it didn't work. I know it's working for me. So uh, that's the way I, I get back. Susan. Um, it's always amazing to hear the different ways that Livestrong has helped you folks and I really want to thank the panel for sharing those with us. It's very inspirational and it shows really how well it works. Um, for those that were here last year at, at the event, you may remember that my family also received benefit 
and support from this uh, tremendous initiative. My wife Delia, who had uh, colorectal cancer, anticipated it about four years ago, and there's no way that I can express the appreciation I felt in seeing the physical and the emotional uh, improvements as a result of going through that program. For that reason, I am proud to advocate, volunteer, and help raise funds for this program. That's why we're all here tonight. If you don't believe me, listen to Ed Haddon. As you've heard throughout the evening, we need to raise charitable dollars to maintain this program at no cost to survivors and their loved ones. While we're proud to alleviate the financial burden for individuals at such a stressful time, this program is not free to put on. In fact, the, uh, the cost is about $1,600 per participant, and this includes all the expenses of uh, the highly trained Livestrong uh, trainers, specialized wellness classes, and the cost of the family memberships, all of them are critical to the success of this life-changing program. And of course, we need your help to ensure the why is there for survivors needing a network of support in the coming years. No matter the size of the gift, we'll make a huge difference in someone's life by subsidizing, subsidizing the cost for participants. So I'd ask that we take out our paddles. The paddles are on the back of your pledge card side of your book, I believe, Eileen. And I'm asking for your thoughtful consideration in standing with me and the survivors here and with making a gift tonight. So who will be, who will join me in being a champion of survivorship with a thousand dollars, opening up with a thousand dollars. We have number 71. We need your courage. She has a name. All right, anyone, a thousand dollars for survivorship. Thank you, 74, 71. Who will join us with a gift of $500 to stand for fund survivorship? $500. We have number 42, number 45, number 165. Thank you very much. Who will help us with a gift of $250 to help the program continue on? We have number 166, number 125, number 130, number 74. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Live strong to keep it going. We need to have all the support we can. So who will help us to keep it thriving with a hundred dollar gift? We have number 74, number 100, number 56, number 85, 82, 32, 31, 105, 27, 92, 36, 5, 6, 111, 95, 88, 123, 103, 10, 147, 127, 172. I think I got it. 20. Thank you. Uh, and Lastly, every gift matters. It makes a difference no matter what we give. Who will pledge fifty dollars? We have one fifty one, seventy four, nine, one thirty seven, one thirty one, sixty four, forty seven, one sixteen, nine, one thirty seven, fifty five from Ed, one fifty eight. Excellent. And uh, I'm very proud and moved to see all of you standing and supporting this wonderful program and the survivorship. Unless you've gone through the program or have seen a loved one that's gone through it, you can't really know what the profound difference this makes. But thank you very much for all your support. Please take a moment and complete your pledge cards and the staff will collect them. And you can turn them in now or on your way up. And what a wonderful show of support this whole group is giving. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. This was truly very inspirational, watching the support in this room unfold. There is no doubt in my mind that you all believe in the power of Live Strong at the Y. And I'm so proud to stand with you in raising the necessary funds to ensure that this program remains accessible to all who need it. At this time, I'd like to invite Vostek back onto the stage. Thank you. Um, and thanks uh, for everyone tonight. It's been a great evening. We're just about wrapping up. But um, we've made a big impact um, 
tonight in terms of our fundraising. Um, the word is that we've raised over fifty thousand dollars this evening, which is great. Uh, is great. Um, these dollars will translate to more cancer survivors being able to participate and live strong at the Y uh, in the years to come. I want to especially thank those who sponsored tonight's event. We raised 40000 from our wonderful mission partners who share our vision for a supportive and thriving community. We can't do this work alone and appreciate these partners who helped us achieve our cause. also want to thank our MC, Dr. Dilip Jane. Thank you for contributing to tonight's program and leading this event. You know firsthand the power of Live Strong at the Y, and we're grateful for your advocacy on its behalf in the medical community. And finally, I want to thank our panelists, Susan, Ed, Carmen, and Robert. We certainly appreciate your journeys and your leadership and perspective and your insights. As the chair of the annual campaign, the Y's largest program to raise philanthropic dollars, I am proud of what we accomplished tonight. Every dollar raised by the Y goes directly into funding program subsidies such as Livestrong at the Y or direct financial assistance to ensure Y programs and services are there for those most in need. With that, I'm going to do the raffle. How do I do the raffle? I, I just watch it? All right. Perfect. That was easy. Um, so, thank you. Um, that's a lot easier than pulling you. So, those, <laughs> look at your tickets. Uh, if you want uh, those raffles, you can pick them up on the way out. Um, and again, we thank you. And for our final word, I'll turn it back to Dylan. Thank you all for coming. For our lucky winners tonight, you may collect the raffle prizes at the table as you leave. If you have not already done so, please turn in your punch cards. That's the whole reason why we were here today. If you'd like to pay this evening, the staff can assist you. Thank you again. Good night and God bless everyone.